Okay, uh, here's something that I um, thought uh, some folks might be interested in. It's uh, another CNC project I've been working on. I want to convert a lathe, a small um, shop lathe, um, manual lathe to CNC. Uh, I picked up uh, some secondhand servos. I've got three of them actually, and two of them I'm going to use, uh, one on the x-axis and the other on the z-axis. And rather than the stepper motor project, which I did last time, uh, this time I'd like to use servos. I think servos are, a D DC servos are probably the, the way to go. Um, they've got encoders, and so we get good accurate feedback, closed loop system, and uh, it should be a good good setup. Very uh, quite fast compared to steppers. Uh, more a little bit more accurate. You can't lose. It's unlikely that you're going to lose steps because it's got uh, closed loop setup. So I think all in all, a more professional setup. And to be honest, not that much more expensive. The uh, the du Dugon um, DG2S encoder was only about 110 bucks. Uh, sorry, the uh, the servo drive was only about 110, 115 bucks, something like that. Um, whereas a Gecko drive, which I bought previously for a stepper motor is about the same. Uh, servos are going to be a little bit more expensive obviously than a stepper motor but if you can scrounge around and get some uh, second hand ones um, you can probably even build them up yourself out of DC motors and um, and encoders. Anyway uh, that's uh, your problem I guess so I've got a couple of uh, handful of good servos here so away I go. The other purchase that I um, went for which is probably the most expensive part was uh, about 190 bucks on a decent um, DC power supply that's 72 volts uh, 20 amps so it's pretty serious and it's got um, two rectifiers there so I can run um, uh, separate I can run them separately one for each axis now I've got two of these drives I've got a second one there I've tested them both they both work great now what I'm doing here is it took me a little bit of time to nut this out because what I had was I had some um, I had there's encoders in the back here, optical encoders that come with these um, Sanyo Denki um, servos. Uh, these are the Super U um, 300 watt 72 volt servo motor. And I'm using, I've been really lucky in that I've been able to nut out how to um, hook up the, uh, the encoder wires with basically very little than other than uh, just a, a screwdriver and a, and a lot of head scratching. I couldn't find any information on the encoder wiring diagram at all um, so I just sort of persisted and what I did was I actually took the whole thing apart which wasn't a big deal and uh, I pulled the, um, the circuit board out and lo and behold on the circuit board itself was the, um, the, the descriptions um, for the various uh, pinouts such as the A, A minus, B and B minus for the channels and also the ground and the power wires, uh, five volt power wires. There was also a signal wire in there and, um, and a Z plus and a Z minus as well, which we don't need for this application. So that worked out really well. And then I went ahead and wired them up and lo and behold, it works. So um, very good. Now what I've got here is a USB, a USB interface that uh, goes with, uh, is, a, is um, basically built for this um, uh, DGS 2S drive. It's an 80 volt, 20 amp capacity uh, servo drive, and using a bit of software called Servo Configurator 3, which is designed to be used with this, we can tune the servo and set the the PIDs, etc., which I've done. Now it may not be perfect just yet, but I think it's pretty good. I I can't really fault them. I guess a perfectionist could probably work the gains and the the accelerations um, a bit better and I've experimented and have had various results. All the results are pretty satisfactory to be honest but anyway for you experts out there there's the results on the settings that I've set them on and there's the graph there that shows the, out, the, uh, the, um, the output of the encoder and the performance there and some experts may be able to comment on whether or not that's a good out, uh, outcome or not but certainly as far as the servo is concerned it's working perfectly. So here on the drive here, I've got the uh, I'm powering the drive with a a laptop um, a laptop 12 volt um, power supply, just a standard sort of thing. Uh, I've got my USB interface here going to my laptop, uh, which is uh, uh, being driven by this Servo Configurator 3. And here I've got my RJ45 for my servo wire here. I've got a nice bundle when I put it on the machine. I've actually hooked it into the original military plug here, and that's worked out nicely. So that's the encoder wire. On the other side here, uh, we've got uh, got to be a little bit careful here because there's uh, 
some, oh, actually, is it, no, it's not that high voltage, it's 240 volt over here uh, on the transformer, but over here I've just got um, 72 volts input here on the red and the black wires, 72 volts, and on the outside it's the motor, the servo motor uh, power, and that's the uh, armature, as you can see. And so the black and white wires I've got going to just a little little junction box here, and they're basically the motors for the power motors for the uh, for the servo motor power wires for the servo motor, and uh, that's about it. Obviously, I'm going to need two of these two drives, but for the moment um, I'm just running one to get things going. So anyway, we'll have a bit of a look, see how this goes. Um, you'll probably see the servo motor kick a bit because it's got a bit of torque and it's at full speed. So I'm going to just run the analyse button here. I've got it set at uh, 400. I might swing that up to 800, 800, which will make it do a full revolution. It's a 400 pulse encoder at two times mode, which uh, seems to result in a full turn. And there it is there. So she gets a real kick. So there's one full revolution. Now if we just pull that back to say 200, you get a smaller outcome. So they're quarter turns. Again, they're full speed. Full full speed. So once I get the um, the Mac 3 talking to it, we can run it at various speeds, but right there that's snapping flat out, it's pretty, pretty aggressive. So I'm going to just step, move up these steps to say a much higher number and that should do some revolutions now. So there you go, there's stage one, and stage two will be pretty much starting to set it up on the machine with ball screws etc, but it's always a good idea to get everything running on the bench first, and I'm very happy with that outcome so far. Okay, bye.